first thing you got to remember in regulators, and it's right here under the big words on the magic screen, control valves versus regulators. Regulators can control pressure or temperature. They cannot control flow. There are these little gizmos called flow setters or circuit setters that are cheap little spring adjusted valves that allegedly can control flow with a variable turn down. We don't even sell that stuff. Jeff ran them into it the other day. So when you're talking pressure regulators, you can only control, or sorry, regulators, you can only control pressure or temperature. Okay? So whenever I do anything with valves, I always throw this up. What do valves do for a living? They block or isolate, they control modulator throttle, they divert or mix fluids, they can be in a backflow prevention environment situation, or they can provide pressure relief. What do control valves and regulators do for a living? They consume energy. Okay, and for those of you that can see the visual, I have the classic vena contract as shown where the energy in the pipe, the fluid is moving along. There's a restriction. In this case, it's a variable restriction because it's a control valve or a regulator that moves. But once it hits the restriction, it has to move faster. There's an energy exchange to make that happen, in which case the pressure drops. So P1 comes in at a certain pressure, P2 comes out at a different lower pressure. At the same time, that can be controlling flow, but only on a control valve. Okay, for here, we're only doing temperature and we're doing pressure. Now, in a temperature application, you are actually controlling flow, but you're controlling one variable to achieve control of temperature. Okay, here's two distinctly different types of valves pictured. We have a sliding gate, Jordan style, and we have a classic globe control valve. Either way, the complexity of the flow path, the flow having to either push through the slices in the sliding gate or down, up, and around the trim and out the valve and the globe valve, the complexity of the flow path is what consumes the energy. The more hey, complex Chris? the flow path, the better job it does. Yeah, go ahead. Is there a relationship between energy consumption and pressure drop across Absolutely. that valve? Absolutely. The more complex the flow path, the more energy that valve will drop in a given size. Okay, You can change the size of the valve from bigger to smaller, and you can also change the complexity of the flow path. The complexity of the flow path can also be your friend. The more complex the flow path, the less likely it is to cause trouble in the form of noise, flashing, or cavitation. However, the more complex the flow path, typically the more expensive the valve. So a, a six inch globe valve is a lot more money than a six inch butterfly valve or six inch V ball. Now, can they both do the same job? It depends. Is the globe valve because of the complexity of the flow path less likely to cause trouble? Yes, but it could be three or four times the money and it's much physically bigger and requires more people and lifting gear. So. When we're sizing regulators or control valves, we're always going to pick the best value, the smallest package we can pick that will achieve the job without creating trouble. Okay. So a control valve has to be part of a control system that includes, includes a measurement device and a controller. And you can control all sorts of things with a valve, flow, level, temperature, pressure, speed of something that's run by uh, air or steam as a motive force. There's lots of new things you can do with a control valve. The most important thing is it can only do one at a time. It has to be a closed loop with a specific measuring device that's chasing one variable. Okay? I looked all over the internet and could not find a decent picture of this, so I found this crappy one, okay? So here's a classic flow loop. We've got a steam control valve on the left, controlling steam, moving through some sort of heat exchanger to heat water in a tank. Above it, up top, is a chart recorder with a PID loop built into it, and over 
to the right is some sort of temperature sensor. Okay? So it's a classic closed loop. The sensor senses the water, the, chart, the PID in the chart recorder decides that the valve needs to open more or less to achieve the set point temperature of the bath of water that's in that tank. Closed loop, right? Three components, a sensor, a control device, and a primary element that's moving to affect the change. When you get into the regulator world, you don't have all those components. This is a mechanical, self-contained device. There's no need for a separate controller or an instrument to measure the process variable. Because of that, it can only measure pressure or temperature because it still has to sense the process variable in some way. In the case of the temperature regulator on the left, it uses the bulb and capillary with the vapor fill that expands and contracts based on temperature. That is its instrument, its point, its place where it picks up what's going on with the process variable. In regulators, whether it's a little JR like in the middle or um, a classic Jordan regulator, the red and black one on the right, they have internal paths to pick up the pressure either downstream or upstream, whether it's a back pressure regulator or a traditional pressure regulator. And I'll show you that on the next slide. Okay. So a self-contained regulator, mechanical, no controller, no field device, has to get input from the process. And it either happens internally or sometimes there is an external pilot that will have access to the process. And the next slide probably visualizes it best. So in this particular slide, it's a cutaway of a classic pressure regulator. And if you can see the, the, uh, the video here, the red represents where the process fluid is allowed to go. And you'll notice internally over to the right, there's a 45 degree path that allows the downstream pressure to interact, interact with the diaphragm and the regulator. So that little slice of pie there is how we're picking up the process variable. If you look on the, on, uh, up to the right, there's two other examples of how it could happen. There's a, in that little green box, there's a pressure regulator with an external piece of tubing going out and tapping into the downstream pipe. So that's where it's picking up the process variable, in this case, pressure. In the tan box below it, we go back to a temperature unit with the classic capillary. Okay. So the question on the slide, so if you can use either a control valve or a regulator for pressure or temperature control, what's the difference? They'll both do it, okay, but you have, there's different factors to consider. Cost, complexity, accuracy, turndown, droop, which shows up as inaccuracy as it goes as flows change, and speed of response. Okay? So let's talk about those couple of components. Cost. Obviously a control valve is more money because there are more components involved. You have to have a PID loop, you have to have a remote uh, instrument sensing the process variable, there's wiring involved. Um, so a control valve is more costly. Complexity, obviously the control valve loop is more complex. Accuracy, the control valve is more accurate. There's no doubt about it. It will maintain accuracy over a wider turndown, which is number four, the next thing to talk about. So again, the definition of turndown is its ability, its ability to accurately achieve its job from a, over a wide range of flows, from a maximum accurate to a minimum accurate. So I put in here on this particular slide a classic droop chart for a regulator. And one of the flaws in a regulator is as flow goes up, the set pressure comes down. There is no, because it's mechanical, there's nothing you can do about it. When you have a control valve and a controller involved, the controller can use its PID functions, its reset, and push that droop back up and recover it. A regulator cannot do it. So. Um, can they do the same job? Yes. Is a control valve always better? Yes, but it'll cost you in complexity and components and dollars, even up to the level of install dollars. Okay. 
Regulators hey, could slash, slash should be. I'm sorry, please. Chris, this is Joe. Um, hi, Joe. Can you go? Hi, Chris. Can you go back a slide, please? Sure. So that lack of droop in the Mark 60 new style, does that also apply into the Mark 50 and 51 styles? If they have Joral on, likely. I can't say yes for sure. I had I would have to look at the design of the valve. But there's, <clears throat> as long as it's a sliding gate and it has Joral on, yes, it will outperform everything else. And the reason is the valve does not have to move very far, and the Joral on is a very forgiving, flexible, responsive diaphragm material. And I don't know, my brain does not know if a 5051 is exactly a sliding gate with Joral on. But the first miracle is the short stroke okay, because thanks. of the sliding gate, and the second miracle is Joralon. Okay? All right. So, this slide. Regulators could, should be used in 20% of all control applications. Okay? The younger guys that are coming out, they don't, they don't think regulators. They think control valves. They think I.O., control systems, let's tune the loop, all, and all that. So technology and trend is fighting the regulator path. So we have to teach these guys, no, use regulators. They're going to achieve what you need. They're going to be self-contained. They're going to be cheaper, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So let me go back to the statement. Could, be, could should be used in 20% of all control valve applications. And there's a big if. If the flow rates stay fairly constant, you cannot have giant flow swings, okay? And to put a ratio on it, 10 to 1 changes in flow, the regulator's not going to do its job. 3 or 4 or 5 to 1, it'll hang pretty good and do a pretty darn good job. So number one, the flow rate needs to be fairly consistent. Number two, accuracy is not super critical. Now, they're super accurate as long as the flows don't vary too much. So that's kind of an if and if or statement. And number three, turn down expe expectations are reasonable, so it all ties together. End of the day, flows don't move much. A regulator is a great choice for pressure control and temperature control. Okay, that is the end of my slideshow.